Shalom, brothers and sisters. Today, I just thought I'd talk about you know, many of us. They've been Christians for many years, you know, and uh, we say we love the Lord, we trust Him. But I want to ask today do we really trust the Lord to sort out all our problems? Do we really know Him in the power of His resurrection, as the Bible says? Do we really understand his purpose, plan, and program? Do we really trust him with what is in our heart? If we did, then for most people, maybe you've been a Christian for many years, but when you have an argument with your wife or husband, you have the pastor on speed dial. Why aren't you dialing heaven? You have more trust in man. And the Bible says in Psalms, when you trust in a man, it's like trusting in an Egypt. Egypt. And Egypt is like a rod that will stick through your fingers. Because of the truth, there are problems that the pastor will not be able to solve. So when you find out that you as a Christian, I will speak down to the pastor whenever there's a problem in your own home. That's why the pastor is a He realizes that you know what you're doing. Because if something rises, you must be able to look into the book of God, to the blueprint, and say, Look, this is my problem. We are actually quite lucky that we are in this age, day and age. Because we've got so many experiences, we've got so many examples in the Bible. And some of those people in the Bible didn't have uh, any, you know, examples like we do. And the Bible says in the New Testament, these stories, these people went through what they went through because it was our own examples. So if you have the pastor on on every situation that you face in your own home. I'm here to tell you that you need to change your attitude. You need to have Jesus on speed dial. Because if your Jesus is of less importance than your pastor, then you have a problem, a big problem. When you get to that day of your death day, if you were putting all your trust in the book, in the book of whatever you call it, it is that you believe, then those people are not able to meet you on that day they will not be reckless in your throat or about. Jesus, because it was Jesus. So many of us proclaim that we trust the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's just go through uh, what I have for you today. Put it uh, in Jesus, the absolute. What we mean by an absolute is it is something like the an argument with somebody, and then say, for instance, look, let's say if you're discussing the theory of relativity, which was put together by uh, Einstein, then let's say two of you were arguing about the theory of uh, relativity, and then Einstein comes, then that is the end of the argument, because he is the author and finisher of that. If you're arguing about Pythagoras theory, the same thing. If you're arguing about a subparticular somebody, that somebody is an expert. They come in, then you pull back and say, look, that's far, but this is now the absolute principle. We believe this is the end of our argument. So if you trust God, it must be the end of every five argument that you argument. The people 
So if you trust God, that implies that you must have the faith. Let's read the scripture before we go. What does the scripture say in Proverbs uh, in Christ? In the Lord with all your heart. Let him be the, the end of the, the last word when everything is destroyed. Let go when you absolutely every situation, every trouble, with all your heart, and lean not unto your own understanding or somebody else's, or the pastor's understanding, but lean unto God's word with all your heart and forget about your own Understanding or anybody else understanding because there is only one understanding that's going to stand in that, and that is the understanding of Jesus Christ is forever in all thy ways, in all thy ways, even looking for a job, you pray, even taking a little journey, you pray. How many people walk out of their homes to go to walk to the shops? So in all thy ways, never mind. I know that sometimes even people call them crazy for the heat. They're like hogs. You know, if you took a pig under an apple and this apple is crawling down, you will make a home under that uh, apple tree. Never look at where they're coming from. You never think anyway. And when they're finished, you say, oh, don't be a pig. Acknowledging everything that you do, your job, your prayer life, your marriage. The reason you go to the pastor is because your marriage was probably put together by the pastor or by some preacher. But if God, when Two are joined by what God has but what man has joined, what God has joined, let not be. So if you marriage, your Christianity, your insight, you sick, you pray, and then you go to the hospital. You, you come back and you pray again and say, I've done what I am human being can do. I have prayed. I've acknowledged you. I went to hospital. It is a requirement for the world. And, and then you stand on that word, trusting Him to see you through. Because I am the Lord that healed thee. By His stripes we were healed. There's even another scripture which says, There was no one sick. And he shall direct thy paths. The problem with us people is this. We lean to our own understanding. And then we also create our own paths that are parallel to what God is. But when you lean into God's understanding, which is the Bible, we you do from key do not take anything out. When you take one word out of the Bible, it's like taking a chunk of God. Because in uh, St. John 1 1, it says, In the beginning was the word, and the word was the word. The word was God. But taking, by taking something out of the Bible, you're actually taking of God, of, of Him. It's like taking a human and cutting off their finger. They are not complete. And if they are not complete, they cannot do all that the human being does. He will direct your paths as long as you to his own understanding, which is the Bible. And I want to show you something here. Many of you people, you know, uh, believe in uh, 
this is in uh, tribalism. I want to tell you, I want to tell you, we're not between. Hate in itself is not an enemy, the first enemy of love. The first enemy of love is fear. Because when you are afraid, it destroys your ability. It's all the strife between our nations, between our races. Because of the fear of the unknown, fear of others, that they might usurp authority over us. And when that develops, it develops into hate. Develops, you are now a devil. You've been transformed from fear. So fear is the worst thing that you want to have. Never be afraid, even if it means you're going to be killed. Let's say, for instance, if I was going to be killed tomorrow, I'd committed a crime. Christian, I'm not going to fear because I know by faith can actually deliver you from whatever it is I'm going to face. But fear will actually deliver you into the hands of the people that want to do whatever they want to do. Look at a few examples in the Bible. The scripture bring it up there. They were sitting there enjoying their lives in Babylon, like most of us are living in Babylon. They were enjoying their lives, oh brother, so and so, sister, so and so, all the things that we had a good time. But it came a time that God, in His own way, that He wanted to raise these boys a little bit up. Because when you're, you don't start at the top of the ladder, you start. At the bottom of the ladder. And when you're at the bottom of the ladder, God raises you one step at a time until you reach the top of the ladder. Because when you, are, when you repent, you're still not with your faith. So as you go on, each year you're supposed to grow, but many of us are not growing. We've been in the mess of eight years and you've only grown uh, two minutes. It's because you are not trusted, not uh, committed totally in the It's where all my strife ends. This is where I begin, God begins to be. So when he decides to do that, when you remember in another video I talked about God's ways are not your ways, neither are they mine. They're way higher than us. So for him to raise Bishop Shatrick in a bed, it meant putting the fear to So when you're going through a trial or even that argument, how do you know that it is God? And that you might say, brother, have you got a scripture? Yes. God went to the devil and said, Have you seen my second He is a great man. And maybe God is saying to you, Satan, have you seen my child, my daughter over there? While other women are shouting at their husband, she respects her husband. My son, so, how he respects his wife, how he looks after his wife. He never shouts at her, he never beats her up like the other men. And then when God says that, it creates, like in the other video, because there's a haze that is around you. When God Creates a little crack in that head. You remember 99.99% of the problem. The ones who put on you, you only get 0.1, 0.01%. He creates that little hole that goes in. And then the devil comes and ties you in your home. You just find one day the wife, uh, the upper lip is in the nose. What does the first thing people do? You also go into the angry mode. And yet, you're supposed to go into what? To your absolute and say, Lord, I don't know what's happened. I shouted in the old my mother, in our marriage. But most, when you trust God, God remember, you know where the problem is. And when you go to Him, 
is then able to create an atmosphere around you. Blessed be the name of the Lord. To create a conjunction, Holy Ghost atmosphere around you. A healing. It is the atmosphere. It is the atmosphere. It makes an egg. Did you know that? Because for an egg to hatch, it has to have that atmosphere, that heat that it needs for the eggs to hatch. That's why they. That's why you got so many ch I mean, chicks out there that are born from because they don't need chickens to be in this. For the chickens to hatch. So when you do that, that is your absolute. You've gone to the absolute. Oh, wait. You checked out looking at that Negro. actually prayed for many days. I say, Lord, these people want us to worship another God. We don't want to worship. You have said it's one of two commandments. Worship only one me, one God. But these people are telling us we must bow down to the Lord. We don't believe in that. We were sitting there waiting, watching, seeing how they were behaving. They continued to pray until the king came to them and said, I'm giving you another one chance. Tomorrow. If you don't change this attitude of yours, you want to worship this God of yours that you have never heard of him. But God was coming on the scene to make sure that the king in heaven, the creator of the heavens and earth, next day comes. God did not come. The king comes to them and says, like, look, boys, I've been very nice to you. You've been very good. Because remember, they used to serve in the king's uh, court. You've given me wine and so forth, like Nehemiah. But now, this is it. If I let you go, what will happen to the whole people? Everybody else will be coming around and say, no, we're not doing this. If I said, go to the fields, they say, no, we're not going. We don't want to. So I have to make you. So bind them hand and foot. And their enemies would be the first ones to start. So don't be a surprise when you're in this Don't worry. Be happy because God is in charge of all things. Die is Christ and to live is Christ. Yes, sir. Pop them together and then they were taking them along as they were walking down there. I can see Gabriel. Coming to the Lord and say, Lord, what did you see? No, people were praying. Would you get in the middle? They were praying all night, waiting for you to come. Lord, what are we going to do? Let me go and change the situation. I'm Gabriel. And the Lord said, No, Gabriel, sit down, my angel. When Lucifer left me, stayed by my side. So sit down, Gabriel. This is a man-sized job. This is my job. I am Jehovah of the seven compound name. I am Jehovah Jireh, the one who provides. I'm Jehovah Rapha, Jehovah Kadesh, the one who sanctifies. I'm Jehovah Shalom. I'm Jehovah Nisi, the one that I'm Jehovah Ra, the Lord is my shepherd. I am Jehovah Tidkeni, Jehovah of our righteousness, and I'm Jehovah Shama, the Lord of his secure 48, 35. Gabriel went and sat down. And then another angel comes in, Wemuth, you know, the one who was used by the Lord in the world in the day of Lord. Lord, let, let me go down there. And I'm going to change the situation right now. I'm going to flood that little kingdom called Babylon. And I will let all these uh, Christians that are living in Babylon be floating up on top of the water in the place of the pasture. We will die in that water. And I will put out the fire that has been put seven times in that furnace. Sit down, Wimwood. 
thank you, son. You've been very, very good to me. You have done everything that I have called. Says Jehovah. It is I, Jehovah. I am going down there myself. So remember, brothers, it is not an angel, not anything that comes in your lead you on when you a testimony when he gives you he wants to give you a testimony the trial and the tribulation to make sure that you have that ten yes sir because when you that point of no return nothing matters anymore because Christianity in itself in its purest form is all about Resting upon the bosom of Jehovah, the breast of Jehovah. He's got two breasts, the Old and the New Testament. Whichever one you suck, you receive nourishment, like Abraham was told. Lean on my bosom, on the Old Testament and the New Testament. As they were going, you and me, what were they thinking? What say you, Lord? They even asked each other, hey, Have you prayed, my brother? Said, hey, I'm all prayed up, I'm ready to go. And then, in their minds now, because they're thinking, How is he going to deliver us now? We're, we're on the head and foot, thrown into the fence that we've been hit seven times. Some of them were thinking, Maybe Michelle was thinking. Maybe he's going to send it and then it will flood the whole thing and it will be destroyed. Oh, how he's going to send me out of it. And then Shadrach is thinking, what is he going to do? Maybe the fire will refuse to light. Oh, they were thinking. Nothing wrong. But don't let your own understanding, your own thoughts play havoc with what so as they were walking up there they see the fire is so high and their enemies are shouting this is the end boys and the thing comes and says boys last chance last chance what are you gonna do and they said oh king that's all We will not kneel down to you, King, because we only worship one God. But we know this. We don't assume. We know that God is more than able to deliver us from this situation and put us in the way. But nevertheless, if we we are ready to die for what that brother is when you trust God. When your enemy comes in, I know like in Nigeria, there's a lot of Muslim people that are doing things without God. When you lean on his understanding and say, Lord, I'm standing on this Bible. If I have to die, because remember, to get to the new world, let it be your will. I'm ready to go. I'm ready to die for what I believe in. When you believe you know, like that, you are ready. The one thing the pastor's thinking, humanistic thinking, then that is the big God. And when they say that, God raised up, he summoned the winds. The winds said, east wind, come over here, boy. North wind, come over here, boy. This morning, into Babylon, I have three of my children that trust me. Even. And he came on the wings over the horizontal rainbow, sliding down. And when the king looked, 
How many did we put in there? They said three, but four. And one of them is like the son of man. If you read that story, after their trial, Mr. Chagrin raised them. And in the enemies who were fighting them all these days, they were the ones who were bent by you. Their enemies, your enemies are the ones that will be by what? Remember, it is fashioned against us that shall prosper. That is an accusement for the interbalistic missile that they have intercontinental. We also have spiritual interbalistic missiles through prayer and believing in God. So when God is ready to raise you up, He gives you a and a tribulation to make you. He will come and deliver you out of that situation. And when you come out of that situation, come out with a testimony. Come out with a testimony. Remember, testimony creates for another testimony. Will create the foundation for another failure. So when you have a testimony, you put it in the air. And the more you do it, the more it happens. The more it happens, the more you do it. The more you do it, the more it happens. The more it happens, the more you do it. The more testimonies you have, the more you're going to have. Because it keeps building up. It's building up. And one day, you'll be able to help somebody. As we are supposed to be Christians, living footprints in the sense of Maybe another wafering brother is getting lost. I will follow this. So, brother, sister, pray, trust in Jesus in whatever you do. Let Jesus be your absolute, or in death. Because remember, there is no death for a Christian. What we call death here is separation from relatives. But those who don't believe will die on that day. We have no death that's going to take us. So, trust in the Lord. Amen.